Greetings, this is Rob, host of Slant Alpha Adventures on Twitch TV. In this video, we'll go over the basic installation and setup of XPilot, a pilot client application which connects Xplane with the VATSIM network. The very first thing you'll want to do as you start to set up XPilot is go into your Xplane root directory. Normally I have a shortcut to that right on my desktop, but we can find it through File Explorer here. Go into Resources and plugins and find any folders for any existing pilot clients you might have installed and move those out of the way. The most common ones are X Swift Bus and X Squawk Box, but if you have a pilot client for another online network, you should remove those as well. You can put them on your desktop or in your document somewhere, it doesn't really matter where, as long as they're not in the plugins folder, but to be totally safe, put them somewhere outside of the Xplane root directory. Now we're ready to install Xpilot. We'll presume you've already downloaded the setup exe file, but if not, you can find it at audio.vatsim.net. But here it is. Find the exe and double click it. Of course, you'll hit the standard yes and next. These you probably want to leave checked, but it's up to you. You want to leave the start menu shortcut and the desktop shortcut, but you can disable those if you like. This is where you'll select the root directory of your Xplane installation. It's most likely going to be correct as shown, but if not, you can hit Browse, go under C, find it down here at the bottom of the list, hit OK, and then we'll hit Next. Now, this is where the pilot client itself is going to be installed. You probably want to leave that alone. If you change that, it might mess up things from a user account permission standpoint. You can change it if you want, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. Let's go ahead and hit install. It won't take very long. and We can hit next. I would uncheck this for now. We don't want to start XPilot just yet. We've got another pretty big step to do first, but we can hit finish here. And now you can go ahead and stash that setup executable somewhere, or if you're like me, just go ahead and get rid of it. Now, before we fire up the simulator and the client app, we need to provide the client with a library of models it can use to represent other pilots. Unlike with FSX and P3D, Xplane cannot use a full user flyable model to represent someone else. A less complex model that doesn't include a fully rendered interior is all it really needs, and it just needs to look good from the outside. Xplane calls this a CSL, which I'm told stands for Common Shape Library, but it doesn't really matter. It just basically defines what an airplane looks like, so X-Plane can put that in your virtual world to represent another player, move it around however X-Pilot tells it to. Having a good variety of these increases the chance that X-Pilot can find a model and paint job that closely matches what the nearby players are logged on as. So now let's download a set of CSL models for X-Pilot to use. The most common set is called Bluebell, and it's available from a few different sources online. If you throw into Google the search terms X-Plane Bluebell CSL, you shouldn't have too much trouble finding one. The standard set as of October 2019 has nine main folders, as well as this file down at the bottom called Vertical Offsets. What we'll need to do, and let's make it easier for ourselves, we'll go ahead and start a new folder right here and we'll just call it CSL. But what we'll need to do is download and unpack each of these nine subfolders into this folder called CSL and then we'll download and install the vertical offset file over top of it. We're going to skip ahead a little bit so we can see what it looks like once we've downloaded and unpacked each of these nine main folders into the CSL folder. Okay, so we've got each of those folders sitting there now. Let's download this vertical offset file. Go ahead and drag this out to the desktop. Let me get this out of the way. Right-click and 7-zip, and let's just extract that right here. We don't need the archive itself. Now, very basically, we'll grab each of these folders, and we're going to drag it right into the folder that we've already created. And yes, we want to replace the files in the destination. Give it a second to think about it, and there it goes. It's copied files into and over top of some of the definition files that are in each of these folders. And once you've got that done, let's find Xplane again. C, Xplane, Resources, Plugins, Xpilot, Resources again. And it's already got a folder called CSL, but uh, if we open that up, I'm pretty sure that's empty. Yeah, so here's the easy way to do that. Let's right-click, delete it, 
and we'll drag the new one that we just created in there and replace it. And there you see it should have everything in it now. Okay, we're finally ready to boot up X-Plane. We'll pick our favorite plane at our favorite airport. So we'll say a new flight, we'll say Beach Baron, we'll say Boston, customize. Remember, we're going to connect to the network in a little bit, so let's make sure we are indeed selected at a ramp area and not uh, holding short of a runway. That'll work right there. So now it's time to finally start messing with X-Pilot. Let's right-click it up here. You'll notice that it already has the administrator icon associated with it on my desktop, and that's because I've gone through this setup process before. And I'm also not sure that this step is completely necessary, but I know that some pilot clients have trouble detecting the push-to-talk when they don't have the primary focus. So this step might avoid that issue. To do this, we'll go under Properties and Compatibility. We'll say Run this program as an administrator, and then we'll click this. It says Change Settings for All Users. Again, Run this program as an administrator. Apply. OK. Apply. OK. All right, let's go ahead and start it up now. Now, the first time you run it, you're going to get this error message saying it couldn't find the configuration file. That's normal. It will create one using default settings, so just hit OK here. Now, it's going to detect a newer version, so we'll go ahead and hit Yes. We'll go through a couple of these steps again. Would you like to configure it now? Yes, you do. All right, we're going to put in my VATSIM ID. That's and password here. Probably helps if I type it correctly. Under name, remember you've got a few options as to how you want it to appear. You can check the VATSIM code of conduct if you're not completely certain what those options are. For me, I like to use a shortened first name and then the rest of my full name. VATSIM server, you want to pick the one that's closest to you physically, not the one where you want to fly in the virtual world. So you'll see the same traffic and controllers regardless of which one you choose, and your server choice does not restrict where in the world you can fly. If you like, particularly if you're running on a single monitor, you can set a toggle key down here in the lower left that will make X-Pilot disappear and reappear. And there's also an option just above that, right here, that will keep X-Pilot visible at all times, even if you're clicking controls in the cockpit or what have you. If, like me, you have a second monitor off to the side that you can leave X-Pilot visible on, you probably won't use either of those options, but on a single screen setup, those might be handy. The notification options and the option to automatically engage mode C when you take off can be set according to your own personal preference. In the audio configuration area, choose your microphone device there, and the device you want your radio traffic played over. Notification sounds are always going to come through whatever default sound output device you have selected in Windows, but the radio comms will be sent to the device of your choosing. Most users should leave this checkbox unchecked. If on the off chance you have a hearing impairment of some degree, you might want to try it. With this box checked, the radio traffic will all come through completely crystal clear as though the user is sitting right next to you. For realism, leave this unchecked and you'll hear realistic static crackle sounds along with the voice, as well as an increasing level of distortion and static the further away the transmitter is from the receiver. The next very, very important step is setting the mic level. Now, the first time through, you might need to hit OK, close, and reopen the settings dialog box. When you do, you should see that the input level peaks in the middle of the green band when you speak. Adjust your mic volume up or down until most of your natural speaking puts the sound level right in that green area. This is very, very important. Do not skip this step and do not settle for the level being down in the blue. If when you're speaking, you're only peeking up into this blue area, it's not going to be loud enough to the other players online. So make sure you get that to the point where when you speak naturally, you're hitting that green level. The output volume can be set however you like. At the bottom right, set a push to talk button on your keyboard or your controller and make sure that it's something that you won't have pressed unless you're actually speaking. The previous voice system allowed multiple pilots to transmit at once, but this new system simulates the effect of that realistically, where simultaneous radio transmissions will block and garble one another. Additionally, on the old voice system you could still hear incoming transmissions while you were speaking. Real aviation radios can transmit or receive, but not both at the same time, so when you're transmitting, you will not hear any incoming calls. To test your push to talk, you'll need to be connected to the network. So let's hit apply and OK to close the settings window. 
Then we'll hit the connect button at the top of the X pilot window. Fill in your call sign and your aircraft type. A cell cal code is optional and usually only used if you're flying transoceanic. Press connect. You should get a welcome message from the server in the messages box. Xpilot's going to detect the status of your avionics panel. So do whatever you need to do to get power to your virtual aircraft radios. Once they're powered up, cycle the push to talk a couple times and make sure the transmit light in your X-Pilot window turns green when you push it and turns blue again when you release it. Note that you can do this on any frequency. It doesn't necessarily have to be the one that a controller's on right now. If someone is talking though, make sure you're not testing your push to talk over them. Now there's one last thing we can do, which is to perform a quick test to ensure that we're transmitting and receiving. I've moved to a place where I know there's a couple of other planes in range. There's no controllers on right now. But let's go ahead and tune to the CTAF frequency, Unicom frequency, of 122.8. And notice that while the voice frequency here is going to be active, you're not going to get those reassuring beeps anymore from the pilot client to let you know that you've tuned to an active voice room. Unlike the old VATSIM voice system, there's no such thing as a voice room. And real aviation radios don't beep to let you know you've connected to a frequency that's in use. If you hear silence, you just have to cross your fingers, you're on the correct frequency, activate your push to talk and start talking, and hope someone's listening on the other end. Of course, if you do hear talking, you want to wait until there's a break in the conversation before you're cutting in. Any station, Baron 514 Delta Victor, radio check. Watch for Delta Victor, speed for 53, got you 5 by 5. Perfect, sir, thank you. There you have it, you're ready to go flying, so keep in mind that X-Pilot is in a beta state as of October 2019, so if you encounter any issues with it, take some screenshots of any error messages you get, then jump on the VATSIM forum and make as thorough a report as you can regarding where you were and what you were doing. If you need some troubleshooting tips above and beyond what I've covered here, you can find the full audio for VATSIM manual at audio.vatsim.net. Hopefully, we'll be seeing and hearing you soon on VATSIM. Travel safely in your adventures. We'll see you in the skies.